good days may be back for Indian IT companies. Nasdaq listed Cognizant today lifted the spirits by posting street beating numbers. Defying theories of a slowdown in the IT sector, Cognizant's net income zoomed 13% to $420 million in the June quarter, largely on the back of strong orders from North America. Revenues shot up as well thanks to high volumes in the healthcare and financial services verticals. Congress, the last of the IT behemoth to come out with its quarterly numbers has also raised the Q3 revenue guidance to $3.14 billion, confirming a turn turnaround in the industry fortunes. And the markets are just loving it. The Cognizant stock opened almost 9% higher on Nasdaq and analysts feel the rub-off effect will be felt on Desi players as well when the Indian market opens tomorrow. Cognizant's teller show and what it means for Indian IT companies. That's our top story on business tonight. We've got uh, Francisco D'Souza, CEO of Cognizant, who joins in on the show straight from uh, uh, New York. Uh, Frank, uh, thank, thank you so much for talking to ET now. It's great having you on the channel. You posted a strong set of results and raised guidance for the second consecutive quarter this year. What's really driving the optimism and demand? Break it down for us. Yeah, as you said, you know, we had the strongest sequential growth uh, in the history of the company. We added $174 million uh, over the last quarter. Um, and I think that the... Um, the core theme this quarter is that we're really winning uh, in digital. As clients transition to become digital businesses, uh, we're helping our clients with that digital transformation and we're helping them with innovation at scale. Uh, the, the strategy that we've had as a company of reinvesting in the business, of making ahead of the curve investments in anticipation of client demand is really paying out and you saw it in the results this quarter. You know, the optimism also comes despite that $100 million hit in the second half of the year because of uh, health net getting deferred. Other companies like, you know, Aetna and Cigna are also going through some mergers. What risks or opportunities does this consolidation spell for you folks, considering healthcare is your second biggest vertical? You know, if, uh, if history is any guide, um, during periods of consolidation like this, um, there's a set of services that we think that we can bring to our clients uh, to help through uh, the process of integration. And so our view is that while the industry is going through a short-term period of, um, uh, of, of disruption through, uh, as a result of the consolidation, that in the medium term, our services around merger integration, around technology integration, are ones that we can bring to bear to serve our clients. In addition, I would remind you that uh, we did the acquisition of Trizetto last year uh, based very much on the view that uh, healthcare companies around the world and in North America are seeking out and looking for new operating models in order to drive new and, um, and innovative approaches to healthcare. And we feel very good that in the long run, our set of assets with the Trizetto acquisition, with uh, intellectual property that we've been able to license from HealthNet, will allow us to continue to serve our healthcare clients and continue to innovate in that market. Frank, North America has done well for most companies. What trends are you seeing there going ahead? And do you see consolidation happening in other industries as well? I think the trend in North America is uh, that um, our clients in North America continue to face um, the what we call the dual mandate, which is that on the one hand, they are continuously seeking new and better operating efficiencies, uh, seeking to gain uh, a greater degrees of efficiency and effectiveness. But at the same time, they're investing uh, quite aggressively in deploying new digital technologies, transforming their business on the back of the opportunities presented by this new wave of, uh, of digital uh, technology. And as a result of that, our services to our clients are on both the uh, operational efficiency side and also on the digital transformation side uh, in North America. Frank, you know, the core, the core traditional business is, has come under considerable pricing pressure for most uh, companies. How is this playing out for you? You know, we think that our clients are continuously seeking to drive to ever greater degrees of efficiency and effectiveness. And so what we've been talking to clients about is uh, this notion of total value, um, of um, looking at both the efficiency and effectiveness side and the innovation side together. Because ultimately what you have to be able to do with a client is help them to drive greater degrees of efficiency and effectiveness in the traditional service offerings in order to be able to free up um, dollars that they can invest in innovation and growth with new digital technologies. When we look at those things together, uh, we see a, a pricing environment that's relatively flat 
uh, and has been flat for some time. And we think that, that um, uh, it's a result of the combined value proposition that we offer to clients. Mm -hmm. In terms of a headcount, Frank, you know, you've had a net addition of 300 people in the last quarter. Are we likely to see more uh, addition, you know, numbers or is the trend now going to be downwards because these are trends that seem to be emerging in both automation as well as artificial intelligence? You know, um, headcount addition, uh, we, had, uh, we added a lot of headcount uh, through 2014 and in the first quarter of 2015. In fact, during that period of time, uh, we added about 42,000 uh, associates to Cognizant. And so we took the, uh, the opportunity after having brought a lot of great talent into the company in the second quarter to take our utilization levels up a little bit, uh, to redeploy talent uh, to these new digital opportunities. Uh, and as the demand unfolded in the second quarter, we had a terrific um, um, talent pool that we were able to deploy against um, the, um, uh, the demand as it uh, unfolded. When I look forward, um, you know, we have some opportunity and we'll continue to take utilization levels up a little bit in the third quarter. Uh, and then fr uh, from there on, I would expect that our pace of, um, of hiring would return to a more normal level. Um, I think that as we look at automation, you know, clearly automation is a very important driver um, uh, in our industry. Uh, but I would still expect that um, uh, our pace of hiring will continue to be healthy as we go forward, despite the, the automation that we continue to drive across the business. Right. You know, digital is the big bet for the industry. What's your own strategy there? Training resources or will you look at, you know, the acquisition route? Because Accenture, for example, has made 45 acquisitions in the last two to three years to try and enhance their digital capabilities. You know, as you know, we were very early in identifying the digital trend. Uh, we, were, we coined the term SMAC or social mobile analytics and cloud. Uh, and we began making investments in our people, in our capabilities, uh, in our thought leadership around digital uh, very early on. Uh, as a result of that, we think we really have the leading digital capability out there. And our view of digital is that it's far more than technology. Uh, our view of digital is that to be able to help a client transform and really adopt digital, you have to be able to work with a client from the initial ideation all the way through the technology implementation and um, uh, scale up of the digital businesses, which is more of a technology thing. And so our approach to digital involves uh, bringing together teams of technologists with teams of strategists, with teams of consultants, with teams of industry domain expertise, and with teams of designers together in a physical space to innovate and to ideate to create biz new digital solutions and business ideas. Right. Do you have a strategy or a target in terms of what proportion of revenues will come from the digital business in, say, a year or two? Uh, does it make sense for you to report this differently, considering it actually pervades every part of your business? I, I think that's the key point. You know, in our view, uh, digital pervades all parts of our company. Uh, there isn't really any part of our business that isn't impacted in some way, shape, or form by digital technologies. And so for us, um, the, the yardstick that we're using to measure ourselves is, are we winning in the marketplace? And I think our results this quarter show that we're winning in the marketplace, and that gives us a great sense of comfort that we've got the leading digital capabilities out there. Any risks at all that you see to the growth story ahead? Any headwinds that you'll be uh, watching closely? You know, I would say that at this point, uh, there, there are more uh, tailwinds than there are headwinds. Uh, the one, as we said earlier on our call today, uh, the one area that uh, we continue to keep an eye on is on uh, the M&A that's going on right now in the healthcare payer industry. Um, as you know, uh, there have been several large acquisitions that have been announced in the last few weeks uh, in the healthcare payer industry. And so we're keeping an eye on that. But as we've given our guidance and revised our guidance this quarter, uh, we've accounted for that and, uh, ha and have been cautious. Uh, in our guidance to make sure that should there be some impact from any of that, it's baked into the, the numbers that we've provided. On a personal level, Frank, you know, it's been eight years since you took charge as a Cognizant CEO. What really keeps you motivated? You know, we'd be interested to know and what moonshots have you charted out for your company going forward? You know, it's, it's a great time to be in the technology industry. Uh, we're going through this incredible renaissance of technology. Digital technologies are changing the world. Uh, they're changing our clients' businesses, they're changing entire industries, they're changing governments. Uh, it's never been a better time to be in the technology space. 
and we at Cognizant are, are, are leading that. So there's a lot to look forward to. We think we're very well positioned and we look forward to uh, the years ahead. And finally then, our last question to you, you know, the whole world is saying that the economic gravity is shifting towards India and China. Having said that, are you going to still be based out of New Jersey or is India, you know, your next calling? Is that even an option? <laughs> you know, I think that uh, Cognizant has always been a very global company. Our management team is very distributed around the world. Uh, we think of ourselves as a, as a very global company and... Um, you know, I think we'll continue to run the business that way. Um, I think it's less relevant where the CEO is located. It's more relevant where the management team is located. And I'm very proud of where we are and how we run this business as a management team. All right, so no plans of shifting to India, but Frank, appreciate you joining us uh, uh, with that perspective from NASDAQ. Thank you so much for taking time out and joining us right here on ET Now. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash ET Now and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at ET Now Live. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash ET Now.